How's it going, entomologists? My name is Jack, and you are tuned into Kentucky Bugs. This week, we're going to be taking a look at bugs, diseases, and how they affect just about everything in our everyday lives. Now, usually we stick to biology, but for this week, to explain the magnitude of the complex coexistence between bugs and people, we're going to be taking a look throughout history. Bugs have been on Earth much longer than we have, and they've been some of the deadliest organisms to humans. That's right, lions, tigers, and bears have had nothing on bugs. One of the worst offenders throughout time? Fleas. Don't just assume that fleas only snack on our pets. Humans actually used to get fleas a lot due to poor hygiene. So much, in fact, that, that it was able to kill majorities of the population, change the points of power, and bring a rise to feudalism. Oh, where did that come from? Okay, I'll be real with you guys. Disease and bugs have shaped the world in a lot of ways, but not without a ton of human suffering. I'll try to hold back the edge as much as I can. The first plague hit the Byzantine Empire hard, moving power up into Central Europe and into the Dark Ages. These lasted until the 14th century, also known as the worst century to be alive. Whoa. I'm good. So in the Dark Ages, Europeans really didn't like to bathe all that much. They called it a sin. Now this was mostly a Western thing. People in the Middle and Far East would continue to bathe at what we would consider a normal rate. And because of this, fleas were able to have a feeding fest. Now fleas didn't cause the plague all on their own. They're what we call a vector, and a vector houses a pathogen that causes the disease. And in the case of the plague, that pathogen is Yersinia pestis. One terrifying attribute about this bacteria is that it makes the flea constantly hungry, spreading the bacteria with every bite. They decide that everything from stars to demons and cats to racism were to blame. After the 14th century, Europe experienced the Renaissance. The mass amounts of death led to a lot of people getting their inheritance a lot sooner. This new wealth became the middle class. So yeah, fleas are awful, and there's also some thought that body lice may have played a part in spreading the plague as well. Uh, both are terrible and some of the worst at spreading diseases, but they don't pale in comparison to Coolisoidea, the destroyer of lives, the six-legged demon vampires of the marshlands. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes have been the bane of human existence for most of our history, and they're still the deadliest animals on Earth today. Mosquitoes carry a lot of diseases, from yellow fever to dengue and West Nile virus, and the worst offender of them all, malaria. Many cultures have experienced breakouts of malaria. Ancient Chinese and Sanskrit writings describe something very similar to it. The Romans would pray to a goddess of malaria named Febris, and it was a major killer in Babylon, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. Like the plague, people didn't really know how malaria was spread. Its literal name is bad air. Mosquitoes and malaria have caused so much human hardship throughout history. And even though they didn't know what caused it, people were able to find a way to treat it. While malaria is an old world disease, Spanish conquistadors colonizing South America found a new world plant, the cinchona tree. And that was discovered to have anti-malarial capabilities. Inside of the plant is quinine, which revolutionized treatment for malaria. Quinine has actually been around for a long time, and if you're a coffee fan or old enough to enjoy a gin and tonic, then you've had quinine. It wasn't until 1884 that Alphonse Laverne actually saw the malaria parasite under a microscope, and he had suspected that mosquitoes had something to do with it. Ronald Ross actually tested this idea on birds, and once he found out that mosquitoes caused malaria, he won the Nobel Prize for medicine in 1902. Mosquitoes can carry around other diseases as well, one in particular being yellow fever, and that has a very interesting history when it comes to one select Kentuckian. Luke Pryor Blackburn, doctor, Kentuckian, and Confederate sympathizer. During the end of the Civil War, it came to light that Blackburn had ordered trunks of used sheets and clothes of yellow fever patients to be sent to the North. In short, this guy wanted to cause yellow fever outbreaks in the North. And thankfully, it didn't turn out like that. Blackburn lived in Canada to avoid prosecution and was never heard from again. Until he came back to Kentucky and started to run for governor. Check back next week to find out how, as well as more bugs and non-bugs that are still giving us diseases today. Thank you all so very much for watching. We'll have another video like this up next week. If you're bugging for more content though, make sure to check out our other social media pages. We have exclusive content coming out there every single week. And lastly, what do you call the biggest ant in the world? An elephant. Thank you very much.